Hello, welcome back to my channel. Yes, I know I haven't been I haven't been on camera for some time now. Um, I actually was away for um, all last week, so yeah. What y'all know if I'm you know either if I'm under the weather or if I'm away, um, you're just gonna hear my voice. But welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another review. And this review is for the B two thousand. 24 BT Awards and what I tell you BT did that they did that no crumbs left behind and it was definitely it was oh my gosh it was everything to me it was everything um I'll I'll go into it the host was <clears throat> Taraji P Henson and Taraji started off with the bang she had her own version of the kendrick lamar song oh hold on am i i think i might have turned on my heat warmer <laughs> i think i turned on my heat warmer hold on it is too hot for that what are we doing hold on i'm gonna get my life together real quick oh no momento Michelle, i sure did okay I was like, why is my butt on fire? My heat warmer was on. Um, anyway, apologies. So um, it started off with Tar Taraji P. Hill Hitson, and she was dressed like Kendrick Lamar from the Pop Out concert. And, oh, for those who didn't see that Pop Out concert, I think I went over a little bit. That was everything. It, child, it was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. That's how I spent my Juneteenth evening, and I loved it. Um, <clears throat> anyway. But she had her own rendition of it that this is for us. This award show is for us. And then she also made like made sure that all the things that she's been talking about, especially with her being in the news of late for the past year or so, about how she's been underpaid and how women in the industry, especially black women in the industry, <clears throat> a lot of times get underpaid. And under, you know, sometimes underutilized, undervalued, all that, you know, the plights of it all. She did her own version of the song, rapping all that in there, and I knew we were in for a good show. And one thing I will say too, this show was when black women heavy, and this Taraji's performance set the tone for that. But then the performances just kept going. Um, I'm also gonna go into the awards too, who won what, but it was good. It was so good. I I enjoyed watching this award show. And I, I will say this. This is probably the first time I've watched an award show and I enjoyed it in a long time. The award shows really have been kind of stale to me. I think BT is like literally one of the only networks that's been getting the award shows right. M MTV's award shows have been, they ain't been what they were in the past. Um, the Grammys, we know that. That, that has never been it. You know, at least when it comes to cult the culture of it all. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, um, uh, one of the performances and, and this, these performances are in no particular order, by the way. Um, and if you want to check it out, all the performances are actually located on YouTube. You can actually go to the BT's, um, actual YouTube and go directly to the performances if you want to see it. And you can also go and see who the winners are too. Um, which is great. I actually did not watch the full BT awards. I just watched the awards. Um, I watch the, the winners and then I also, and the speeches because I do care about the winners and their speeches. And then I also, basically the, their um, YouTube has like the highlights. So you can like find all of it. So it's, that's awesome. Anyway, um, so Glorilla performed and Glorilla killed it. Why I tell you how Glorilla has glowed up? She has glowed up, no pun intended. She started with Yeah Glow, and then she did TGIF, and after that, then she ended with Wannabe and then Meg Thee Stallion, and her performed that together, and she ate No Crumbs Left Behind. It was, it was good. And then another great noble performance that I think, every, you know, if you have the time to check it out, check it out. Um, Shibuki um, and 
Shibuki, I think it's new to those who don't listen to country, and that's including me. I did not really, I've never really been someone who's listened to country, but thanks to Beyonce, and I will give Beyonce her flowers for this, I am starting to listen to country more because of Cowboy Carter and her highlighting the black country artists, because over here we celebrate everybody black. And um, we celebrate everybody, but you know, I'm biased. Hello. Um, so, Shibuki did his song, Tipsy, because he has a country rendition of that song, and that song is taken off. And then he did it with Smash Up when Jay Kwan, the originator of Tipsy, came out and performed it. It was good. It was so good. And because I'm from that era when that came out the first time, how we were like, everybody in the club getting tipsy. And, and also, too, the fact that Shibuki made, was such a genius at making it into a country song. Because, child, when it comes to country music and hip-hop music, I think we all have that in common where we sometimes go to the club and get tipsy. <laughs> like... It, it was genius to me. Genius. Genius. So that was another performance that was pretty notable and aw awesome. And these are the main stage performances. There were other um, performances prior to this show. Um, they call the red carpet performances. Um, I checked out some of them because Lil Mo was in that. Um, also, um, Connie featuring um, Remy Ma performed. And I love that song. Like, is Ratchet. Like, um, I think it's called um, Young and Ratchet. Yeah. No, Ghetto Ratchet. Ghetto Ratchet. Cha, cha, cha. So get it. Like hood and, and drug dealers and gang members. And, 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 and they eat like a vacuum. <laughs> Remy killed that song. So I, yeah, I love that song. Um. So I did, I did check out some of those, too. So those are available, too, if you want to watch some of the non-main um, stage performances before the award show. So there's that. Okay. So another performance, which was super notable, and I was so excited to see, like, very, very excited to see. For those who don't know, I am a huge Victoria Monet fan over here. This is a, this is a fan account. Not a stan account, because I don't stand anybody, but... Um, the higher power and myself. Like, <laughs> I don't stand nobody like that. Let's, let's just be real. But fan account. This is a fan account over here for Victoria Monet. And we finally got to see a first major awards show live performance. And she did On My Mama and All Right. And when I tell you she killed that and did that to the point where after she was done, she had a standing ovation. Yeah. Because I wasn't the, clearly I was not the only one waiting to see a live performance from her. And if you know Victoria Monet's story, I'm not going to get into that because I, I could do a whole entire separate video about Victoria Monet and my love for her and how much she's been so underrated and like overlooked throughout the years. And she's finally getting her flowers at the age, you know, being in her 30s now. When she's been in the industry for a long time. Like some of y'all faves that y'all bop into. She wrote that. I mean, let's be real. Ariana Grande would not have her career that she has right now. If it wasn't for Victoria Monet. Because most of those songs that people were bopping to. During kind of like that era of when Ariana Grande was doing like a lot of R&B pop. Victoria Monet wrote that. And they're best friends. So, I mean, there's that. I don't know if they still are, but at the time, they're, I mean, I'm assuming they still are. I don't think there would be anything that would change that. Um, regardless of how I feel about Ariana Grande. I, <laughs> we're not going to get into all that. But the point stands that this woman is extremely talented. She's a total package. She's next up. She should have been next up. And she's finally getting the flowers she deserves. And... This is not the last time we see her on this show. So there's that. Um, so then after that, another major performance. It was like two. There's a lot of good performances. And there were some sh performances that I was like, eh, all right, I guess. Like, not for me, but okay. 
um, Meg the Stallion. <laughs> Y'all already know. As a fellow stallion herself, because I'm a tall girl, and I'm thick. I'm a little bit more on the thicker side. I want to get back to slim thick. Like, I kind of want to get back to not quite Meg the Stallion size because she is slim, slim thick. Um, I want to be more... Anyway, this isn't about me. My, the whole point is, <laughs> you already know I love me some Meg the Stallion. And she did his boa and the song I've been bopping to all weekend since her album came out. And side note. Check out her album. Her album did come out over the weekend. And I, I actually listened to the whole entire album. I I personally like it. Um, it's definitely an album for the summer. Um, she does have some retrospective songs on there. And she does have some songs where she's playing with some different sounds. I don't know if the sound, the different, some of the different sounds she's decided to go with. I don't know if they work or not. But I need, to, I need more time to sit with it. You know what I mean? But the one song that I immediately just kept putting a repeat over and over again, Where Them Girls At, she performed it. I knew that. I was like, that must be the next single because that song, it is a banger. It is perfect for the summer. And it's like, especially if you're a single hot girl out here like I am. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so besides that we also saw will smith perform for the first time in a long time apparently he has a song off the bad boys um the bad boys um movie that's out right now in the theaters which by the way i still want to check out i haven't seen the other one before that though so i need to i need to actually rewatch all of them because i haven't seen bad boys one or bad boys two in so long i forgot all that stuff so i think i need to go back to watching go from beginning the first bad boys all the way to this one and go see it or wait till it comes out on you know you know video or on streaming services and watch it that way but i do still want to see it that's my whole point um anyway so will smith performed his song um he did a great job um kurt franklin joined him on stage too it was a very very good show um with showing with him and he actually was kind of the only he was literally the only male performance on this on this stage by the way he was the only male performer this whole entire award show. Well, so, so wait, 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 I lied. I lied. I lied. <laughs> Pause on that. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, one of the few. One of the few. Because Shibuki, uh, Shibui, sorry, Shibui. I don't know why I keep saying Shibuki. Shibui, um, Jaquan, Will Smith, and then um, Tyler had Ghana on stage, and I think another African artist or something like that. So, yeah, my apologies. So, but this was a very women heavy show. That's kind of why I kind of almost thought that because it really was a extremely woman heavy show. Anyway, so after Will Smith performed or um, another performance that was pretty notable was Lotto performed. Out of all the rap girlies, um, her, I, okay, hear me out. I actually kind of do like Lotto. A lot of definitely is missing something for me. She always has missed something for me. Um, I don't know. She just kind of doesn't really have an identity. Is that what it is? Put in the comments what y'all think. But I feel like a lot of is just lacking something for me. She's very talented. I don't think she's really. I, I think she's original. But there's just. There's the personality to me is lacking. Um, like, I know she's really close with her sister. Um, and I'm not, I don't think, she, I don't, I'm not trying to say she needs to be toxic or anything like that. It's just, I can kind of see that she's insecure. I don't like to see that in an artist though, especially a rap artist. I, that's kind of like, <sighs> or if you're insecure, I want you to at least own it. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's part of it. And then also, too, she just has moments where she comes across um, try hard. She seems like she's trying too hard. I think that's what it is. And But that I think it's, that ties to insecurities. Um, and it just seems like her, she does lack an, an identity of her own to a certain degree. 
Like it's it's like she's a little bit this person, 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 but I don't see where she's at. Um But I love I love her music. I do like her music. 777, I listened to that album. I actually enjoyed it. Um Sunday Service, love that song. Especially love that remix because Flo Millie's on it and she's underrated and Meg the Stallion. So um and the music video was so so much fun to see. But I say all this to say, um, I, I've seen Wow perform multiple times on BET Awards. And this is probably the, my least favorite performance from her. It was very introspective to a certain degree, but it just seemed like she was lacking energy. The energy was lacking. Um, this isn't the last time we see her on stage, but it still seems like, and I guess I'm, and I don't want to compare her, but I'm comparing her to like a Glorilla and the Meg the Stallion, they're high energy. And I guess I want that. I kind of want that from my rap girlies right now. And maybe if I go back and watch performance at another time where I don't want the high energy, maybe I would enjoy the performance more. But I guess that's what I was expecting. So I don't know if anyone else felt, felt that way. And I don't want to be critical of Lotto, but I just have seen her perform better before. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. And maybe it's just the music choices that she has. Like, that um, big big mama song or whatever that she has right now that is a low energy song but i don't really like that song i mean it's cute at the beginning but then that that break to me it sounds like almost like a drake song and i hate that it sounds like a drake song because I, i'm not a fan of drake right now <laughs> like most of us right so it's kind of like uh i don't know Anyway, moving on. I, I don't want to. I don't want to come across a certain way. I feel like I am. Anyway. Okay. Um. By the way, this isn't the last time we see Lotto, and I feel the same way when I say that about Lotto at the, the the second time we see her. And again, I'm not trying to like be critical. Well, I am being critical, but I'm not trying to be negative. I, I do like Lotto as an artist. I just, I just there's something missing. Um, I want that 777 energy. I want, um, um, be from the South energy. Like it's missing to me. Even she actually has a feature. I want, I want her energy that she has when she's a feature too. Cause when she's a feature, she, she shows up to me. She shows up and shows out. But anyway, so after that, um, we have um, Tanner Ardell, and she's the one that has that um, Buckle Bunny song. She killed it. She killed it. She really does look like a country Beyonce. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. Um, I was glad that they gave her the platform um, to do that, to do Buckle Bunny. And then she did another country song that was a very much a country song. And I enjoyed it. I actually now want to find out what the other song was and add it to my playlist. Um, and that's another one. Thanks to Beyonce, we're getting we're getting to see that too. So that's awesome. Um, and then another performance was Sexy Red. Sexy Red's performance was good. That's not my type of music. I mean, I love Get It Sexy. That's the only song I like by her, really, is Get It Sexy. Because that is such an Aries anthem. Because <laughs> you can say Get It Sexy about anyone, you know. I know that's her song. That's her name, Sexy Red. But I feel like I'm sexy. So I, when I sing it, I'm singing it about myself. I'm like, Get It Sexy. I Get It Sexy. I Get It Sexy. I mean, it's very, very... Aries energy so <laughs> I do like that song and she did that song um I do I'm not a fan of her playing doing the whole play on Trump and all that Ugh, that's cringe but it still was a good performance I hate to say it like I'm gonna call a thing a thing it was a good performance it was a high energy performance so there's that um she did You're My Everything. <laughs> I did laugh. I ain't gonna lie. Because she is so unserious about it. And it was definitely meant to not be a serious song. It, but we all kind of knew that. 
It's just the timing of it bad. <laughs> Drake was not there, by the way. Let's let's make it clear. Um, but it's kind of odd because Sexy Red's definitely on that on the Drake side of things. So I didn't know how it felt watching the performance. I still did. I still enjoyed it. Um, but I mean, the order of my favorite performances so far um, is. Victoria, Megan, Glorilla. That's the order that. I mean, and really, Glorilla and Megan were neck and neck for me. Victoria was the one I was looking forward to the most because I haven't seen her perform yet. So that, that was kind of the other thing. But anyway. Um, so um, also Tyla, um, the African artist, she performed. She did her song Jump um, with um, Gunna. It was good. It was good. I still, and this is, this is a me thing, um, and maybe it's a generational thing. I don't see the hype when it comes to Tyla. That's just me. Don't judge me. That's just me. I don't see the hype. Um, her music just, to me, is just all right. Um, anyway. So from there, let's go into um, some of the winners and then additional performances and that'll do it. Okay. <laughs> so let, let's go over the winners. I'm going to go go over them and not quite the order of things again. So Victoria Monet got two awards that um, I at least saw. I don't know if more came out or not. She got video of the year. And what I enjoyed about this speech is she gave Bankhead, gave Sean Bankhead his flowers because he has been killing it. When it comes to all your faves, choreography has most likely been his choreography. And he's been killing it. And especially her choreography, she's been eating no crumbs left behind. And so he was on stage to, to kind of share the moment with her. And that was really, really awesome. Um, and then along with that, she also got the Her Award. And again, Victoria was giving her flowers out to people. And I loved it. And she was like, I want us all as women to collaborate together. And I know she means that because Victoria Monet is on Meg Thee Stallion's album as a feature. And that song, Spin baby that's going on the um get into a playlist let's just say that <laughs> that's going on that playlist um because that is a whew. yeah anyway so besides um victoria monet we had um tyla won for best international act and best new album Um, sorry, I feel really bad and kind of judgy for that. And then Usher won for best male R&B and pop artist. And he also got kind of like the, um, lifetime achievement thing or whatever. Um, he was the one who was honored this year for that. Um, I don't know what they call it exactly. Their version of like a lifetime achievement award. He got that. And the tribute for that was awesome. We're not going to go there yet, but... Yeah. And then um, the other reason why I'm not going in order is because Killer Mike got the best album, got the best album um, award. And I think his, his speech, that speech of his, I felt like I was, in, I felt like I was in church. He spoke on him getting arrested after getting the best rap album at, at the Grammy. He spoke about that. He spoke about how important it is to be black and all that. Whether you like him or not, he is a black man. We're all family in here. That whole entire thing. And then he mentioned, you know, whoever, whoever you vote for, that's one thing when it comes to president elections. But we need to be voting for like our city councilmen, our, you know, mayors, those type of things. And if you don't like those people, um, go and run yourself and mic drop and killer mike literally killed that mic 
<laughs> no pun intended. Like uh, it was just it was it was that was a good speech. I would definitely check out that speech if you want to be uplifted because he was speaking truth there. He was definitely speaking truth to power. Um, but back to um, so there was a couple other um, performances we had too before I go to the main one, which is that. That Usher tribute was everything. We want, we're going to go into get into that last. Um, Dolce, which I love her. I wish she would have did Alter Ego because that's my jam. Um, but she actually did her new song that she just um, recently released. Um, I think recently was Rocket. She did that song. She wasn't actually um, at the award show. She did like a Sprite thing where she had her own set and all that. And it was like, off location and she did that she did that um and then <clears throat> Eris and van these two little girls they have this song called be you and i it, it's a it's a kid song but it's very applicable and it is a bop and for those who don't know Eris is Eris harris ti and tiny's little girl killing it and they were clearly lip singing, but it didn't matter. Their performance was so cute. I mean, they're little girls. They're like, what, maybe six or seven years old? Like, they're, they're little, little girls, and they were jamming. And then they, all the kids, like, were in, they had, like, a cl this cute little classroom. And it says, future um, HBCU students. And they're all just j dancing and bopping about BU. It was the cutest thing ever. It was so cute. Um, they did a good job. Um, everyone got a nice kick out of that. And then, um, Lauren Hill performed. We saw a rare performance of Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill and, um, YG, uh, Marley, her son performed and they also did a Bob Marley song. It was good. It was good. When I told, when I tell you that BT, they did that, they did that. Um, and then I Spice performed as well. Now, okay. <laughs> I know I gave a shady look right there. What I will say is, it's to me, and I hate to say this, I think I Spice performance was better than even Lajo's solo performance. Um, when it comes to the energy. So finally, she's giving energy. Problem is, it doesn't, with Ice Spice, it doesn't feel like that is Ice Spice's energy. It seems like it's Nicki Minaj's energy. Because she did that song that literally sounds like a Nicki Minaj song. And she's kind of acting like Nicki Minaj at the beginning too, which is really weird. And then she did the song, the fart song. And I, I'm sorry, it's never going to be for me. <sighs> it's like. Something's missing with her too. And I don't know if I've just been thinking or listening to other reviewers talk about how both. Oh man, it's just. It, uh, what is a step above basic, but you're not like it. You're not her. You're not that girl. What's, what's a step above basic? It's not, I mean, they're not unseasoned. She's not unseasoned. It's just, I don't know. Something's missing. So something's missing with her too. So the performance was better than it has been. That was probably the best best performance we've ever gotten from Ice Spice, but that's not saying a lot. She still just has this dis this disconnect when it comes to the audience, and she stepped up her choreography. She did not have her normal wig that she has on. She had like more of a Nikki looking wig, to be honest. Um, and but still the hair, the same color hair. Um, yeah, the pro performance was better. It just still isn't. She's also missing something too. But the only difference is I don't really like Ice Spice songs. I feel like it's, Ice Spice is for like little kids. I'll be honest with you. Like it, I'm too, I've aged out of her, the type of music she does. I'll just say that. I aged out of it. I don't have any Ice Spice music in my playlist other than the songs that she, really just one song that she had with Nicki Minaj. The Princess Diana remix. That's the only song I have for my spice. 
And I really only have for Nikki's verse. <laughs> and I am not a barb. I just, I like Nikki's music, but I'm not really a barb. Um, I guess if you're going to put me in one of those stands when it comes to like the rap girlies, I guess I'm a hottie. Like I'm more of a hottie, if anything else, because I can't really relate to some of the other stuff. Um, and I mean, I guess that's for the moment. You know, I, I like all the rap girlies equally for the most part that are talented. I just kind of feel like, I don't know. I, how long has Ice Spice been a thing and the improvement has been very little? And now the only time where I hear a difference in your flow is you literally are taking Nicki Minaj's flow. I don't know. I said what I said. But anyway, let's get into the main reason why we're here. I'm not trying to be negative. Um, I feel like if I keep talking about her, I'm going to keep being negative because, again, she just isn't for me. How about that? She just is not for me. Let's let's go on and move on. Last but certainly not least, the performance performances of the night was this. And we knew it was going to be good because it was an Usher tribute. And Usher didn't perform in his tribute, which I'm okay with. But Usher was definitely in the audience in the building. And I'm wondering, did he have a pick of all the artists that he wanted to use for this? Because if he did, man, he did that. So now when I say that he did that, I am thinking for on paper, it seemed like he did that. Um, following, I mean, You'll, you'll hear in this video, I'm going to give my thoughts on some of the misses with this. Like, um, I did find out later on after editing this video that uh, Tanaje was actually a, a last minute substitute. It was actually, I think it was supposed to be Normani. And Normani would have made more sense because she has the voice as well as the dance moves. And nice and slow would have fit her more than would have fit a Tanaje. Um because Sinaje is more of a pop, vibey R&B girl. And Normani's that too, but she's also an R&B, R&B girl. Like, we know she can do all of it. Um, and, I'm, and it's no slight against Tanaje. I just, as you hear in this video, that was the one thing I was a little bit confused about, along with Lotto, along with Lotto as a whole. That was just kind of off. Um, the other thing that I would say is, Marsha Ambrosia, I think this would have worked if this was in her prime. Marsha just isn't, I don't know. Like, I remember Marsha Ambrosia during when she was with Flo Tree and Say Yes. I haven't really followed her career as much after that. And her style of singing is definitely not the same or really the same range to me as what Usher does. But that's neither here nor there. That's just a side note. And also, too, yes, as much as I would have loved for Usher to perform his own songs, that would, of course, that's like the prefer preferred option. I do like that he decided he wanted the ladies to basically do his work, minus Childish Gambino. That was kind of the only thing that kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. But I also am a fan of Childish Gambino as a whole. So I kind of saw how that got pieced together. Um, anyway. Without further ado, let's let's continue on with this um, the review of this performance. The first song that was performed is "You Don't Have to Call" and "Childish Gambino." Um, Donald Glover, aka Donald Glover, was performing this song. The first part of it, um, it started off slow, and then once it hyped up, then Kiki Palmer joined in, and Kiki Palmer did. That I think Kiki Pomp. If you didn't know how talented Kiki Palmer was, this performance lets you know how talented Kiki Palmer was. She show she showed up and showed out. And then after Kiki Pom um, Palmer did that with Childish Gambito, she did she then transitioned to "You Make Me Wanna," um, or "You Make Me You Make Me Wanna Be the One I'm With," start a new relationship with you. She did that. Um, and 
doing the dance moves and everything. Had the had the um, Atlanta hat like that, even though she's from the shy. But she did that. She did that. And then from there, then um, one of the newer songs that Usher has, he has a newer song with um, Summer Walker. So Summer Walker did her verse in Good Good and, and killed that. Um, Summer Walker is not known to be a great performer, but like her music, I do like her music. I will say that. Um, I will never go to Summer Walker performance though, because I've been told, I mean, that's just a known thing. She's not a great performer. She has social anxiety. That's just not, she's more of a, she's definitely more of a vibes artist. And maybe, let me circle back. Maybe that's why certain people like Ice Spice and even or Sexy Red, they're vibes artists. Except for, I will say Sexy Red actually performs well on stage. And, but outside of that, neither of them are my vibe. <laughs> so maybe that's the other thing too. But Glorilla is my vibe. I go, because <laughs> Glorilla just seems like a fun girl. Um, I, I guess also the other thing I think about is like, would I hang out with these people outside of their music? And I'm thinking with, Yeah, the people who I like, I feel like I would. I actually would hang out with Lotto, too. Lotto seems fun, too. It's just there's still something missing with her. But anyway, I hate to keep going back to that, but I just I kind of want to clean it up because I feel like I, I don't want to. This is not a channel that bashes anyone. I'm not trying to be here to bash anyone. It's just it's my opinion. So there's that. Anyway. And then from Summer Walker. Then Coco Jones did There Goes My Baby, and Coco Jones did that. She did that. Side note, I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get to see Coco Jones perform. I know she performed last year, but I wanted to see her perform again because that song, that Here We Go, I think that's what it's called. Um, the one that she has out right now, the one that she has, the um, she samples of Celebrity over, Overnight Celebrity. Well, the, the sample of the sample, because I don't remember the original song that is sampling. But the overnight, people my age remember overnight celebrity, that sample. I really wanted to see Coco Jones do that song. And also her sample and her, her ring song that she does. And then if SWV would have popped up, oh my God, that would have been everything. Like I've seen that online when she's done that, but I, I would love to see a performance where she does that again, where she... I love Coco Jones. This is definitely another Coco Joe Stan account. Side note, during um, Meg The Stallion's Where Them Girls At song, she shouted out Coco Jones. She's like, Coco Jones, Victoria Monet, I see y'all. Like, she shouted both of them out. I was like, yep. <laughs> I would too. Um, okay. So then from there, then we had Marsha Ambrosia did Superstar and she killed it. We already know who. We know who and what Marsha Ambrosia can do. I mean, I mean, we we know we know how she does. She is she's everything. And then from there, then Chloe did a sultry version of Good Kisser, and she did that. She did that. Um, Tanaje did nice and slow. Um, I wasn't expecting to see Tanaje, so that was a pleasant surprise. Um, she did what she needed to do for this. Um, this was out to me. I feel like this was a, the um, Usher. How Usher performs and how Tanaja performs were do, they're due to they're two different styles of artists. So I wasn't surprised to see that it it it, it didn't come natural. I will say that when it comes to Tanaja to me. And I love Tanaje. I actually love Tanaje. I love her music. I love her down. But it's a different, you know, Tanaje is another vibes artist, but I like her vibes. <laughs> and she also is a great dancer. And I guess the other reason why that the nice and slow song kind of felt off for her to be doing is because Tanaje made her strong suit. She's an amazing dancer and she wasn't doing so much of it based off the type of song that nice and slow is so there's that 
But then I almost turned off the TV after this because I was like, that, that's it. That's all. The show's over. And I felt bad for the artists, the two artists, the, the artists after these two that had to follow this. There's no way to follow this. This should have been the last, this song should have been the last song. The bad girl song. Oh, oh that bad girl song. So. <sighs> Tiana Taylor <laughs> did the bad girl song. Dressed in her masculine outfit that she be wearing sometimes with the hat and everything. And do you know who the bad girl was? Because those who don't know, um, this is a song that, um, I believe it's the song that Beyonce and um, Usher have together. So when they performed it, which is only once they've ever performed this, they've never, is they've, this is when Jay-Z and Beyonce first start get, being together. So Jay-Z was really weird about who was to do stuff with Beyonce. It was a whole thing for those who don't know from back in the day. But this song was only performed like it, it, it's a rare performed song. It's a song that Usher does not perform often because when he does or when he did, I mean, he does. I'm sure he does perform it. But the, the way it's supposed to be performed is him and Beyonce together doing that. And it. You won't see it again. <laughs> it's one of those things you're probably never going to see it again. There's that. And so when Tiana Taylor was playing Usher's part and Victoria Monet is playing Beyonce's part. To me, that was way I was waving my pride flag when I saw that. I was like, yes, yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> because there's moments where I'm just like, maybe I just think that women are beautiful, but really I'm straight. Nah. <laughs> when I saw that performance, I was like, child, I'm so, I, I'm, I, I'm so pan. It's ridiculous. I, oh my God. I saw that. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't like it wasn't risque or nasty it was just very sensual and I was just like oh my gosh oh my gosh for me the only thing that was missing was Kaylani. if Kaylani would have been on that stage I would have been just I would have been done I would have been done and Usher enjoyed it too he enjoyed it as well <laughs> and then the final song that could the final performer to do a song that could not, no one was matching that. Ludacris and, Ludacris and Lil Jon would have had to come out for them to match this. And there was no way that, I mean, and it still wouldn't have matched it in my opinion. Um, was Lotto did yeah. And Lotto's energy to me was still off. I don't know if there's something going on with her, but her energy was just still off. And they did use this opportunity at the end to have everyone just come to the stage and, you know, be like, hey, we did that. And then after that, that was the end of, um, that was the end of like the tribute. But when I tell you that Tiana Taylor and Victoria Monet stole the show for me, I forgot about the rest of the show after that part. I, like everything else, throw everything else in the garbage. Like, <laughs> And not like that. It was just like, I was not expecting that. And they did that. I want Tiana Taylor, I want Tiana Taylor to come out of retirement so badly. <laughs> I know she's doing her other, I know she's doing her thing behind the scenes and doing like tours, you know. I think she's like a tour director and stuff like that. She's doing all the behind the scenes stuff to make shows be great shows. But Tiana Taylor is such, I, I, I'm just so upset that I never got to see Tiana Taylor perform because she's so good. 
And that just reminded me seeing Tiana Taylor perform. This to me, this night gave people a reminder of who these women are and why they're in the positions they are right now. I, I ain't gonna hold you. And BT, BET did that. They did that. This was probably one of the most enjoyable award shows I've seen in a long in a long time. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.